Dan Reincarnation Chapter The Brave Melon If you're asking if it feels good hmm, Melon blinked a few times as he pondered his answer. He was currently feeling a mix of specific emotions, but he wasn't sure how to express them in words. While Mullen was lost in such concerns, an eyes widened her slitted eyes and glared at Eugene. What a pathetic, shameless and ugly sight. Mel originally wanted to take Eugene's side, but she couldn't help but empathize passionately with an eyes words. Who was the one who barged in here of his own accord? It was Eugene. Who was the one who begged for a fight with Mullen? Even when Mullen had said that he didn't want to fight, it was Eugene, who was the one who got all agitated and decided to restart a fight that was already over. It was Eugene. All of this happened because of Eugene. He had even gone so far as to use ignition, only to lose. Having lost so completely, shouldn't Eugene at least keep his mouth shut out of shame or embarrassment? So why on earth was Eugene screaming like he had anything to be proud about? As such, Mer just nodded her head in agreement with Anais. Even Christina slightly agreed with them. Having fallen in love with Eugene ever since the Fount of Light incident, Christina tended to view everything that Eugene did as meaningful, noble, glamorous, and cool. But at this moment, she honestly felt that the current Eugene, who was kneeling on the ground with a spurting nosebleed, shouting whether it felt good to win, looked a bit unsightly and Mullen continued to hesitate, unable to answer right away. He was slowly coming to understand the true nature of his feelings. Did it feel good? Of course, it did. Even if he might be different from his previous life, the opponent was none other than Hamel. It had been fun to fight with Hamel like this, and it was also fun to have been able to defeat him with an overwhelming gap in their strengths. Even with Hamel using ignition, however, Mullen couldn't just say, it was really fun. Now that the madness had been driven from his head and Mullen was able to think clearly, he realized that if he answered positively, the one afflicted with madness this time would be Hamel. During the moment when Mullen was hesitating, unable to give an immediate reply, prominence, which had yet to disappear, burst into flame, embers of mana ignited in the air around Eugene. Eugene wasn't able to move his limbs as he wished. But if he used his mana in place of his muscles and nerves, it was still possible for him to move like this, with as much speed as he could currently muster. Eugene's body transformed into a flash of lightning. He raised his broken arm and readied a warhead of flames in his fist. Like this, Eugene aimed for Mullen's chain. But then, their two fists crossed. If both of their arm lengths had been similar, their fight could have ended in a beautiful cross counter. But there was actually an extreme difference in Eugene and Mullen's arm lengths. This meant that Eugene alone was struck by Mullen's fist. Fortunately, Mullen didn't intend to strike Eugene with his fist, instead only seeking to block Eugene's forward movement. In contrast, Eugene had swung his fist with all his might as he aimed for Mullen's chain, but because of the unavoidable difference in their arm lengths, he couldn't even touch Mullen. Osh, Eugene choked out a groan. Mullen's fist was as large as Eugene's whole skull, as such, rather than looking like he had been blocked by Mullen's fist, it looked more like Eugene had slammed into a huge boulder face at first. Oh my god, Mer gasped, a surprise attack right as Mullen was thinking of a reply. And it didn't even manage to succeed, Eugene's speed just made him slam his face even harder into the counter, perhaps because Eugene was in such an exhausted state, he was too tired to even dodge it. Eugene fell back, his nosebleed spewing blood like a fountain. Seeing his miserable appearance, Mer unconsciously let out a deep sigh. How ugly. Thankfully, Eugene wasn't able to hear Mer's regretful sigh. This was because the moment his head fell backward, the lights turned off in Eugene's head, and he fell unconscious. How long had he been out? Eugene finally came to his senses, but he wasn't able to open his eyes right away. This was because the things that had happened right before he fainted were messily playing out inside his head. The blood had gotten to his head, and he had lost control. Now that his agitation had subsided, Eugene clearly realized just how ugly his behavior had been. Eugene silently writhed in shame. He was afraid of what kind of teasing and stares awaited him when he opened his eyes. But that wasn't the only reason he couldn't open his eyes. His eyelids were simply too heavy. His body didn't have any strength and it really hurt. He literally couldn't lift a single finger. I know that you've regained consciousness, so why are you still pretending to be asleep? 
a devil's whisper tickled his ears. Yijing tried not to react to it, however. The devil wouldn't allow Yijing to just ignore her. Pope. The devil's finger gently pressed down on Yijing's pectoral muscles. Yijing groaned. Gesh, Yijing usually was quite skilled at overcoming pain, however, right now, he wasn't in a situation where he especially needed to endure pain, and her fingertips were able to accurately pinpoint the places where his muscles had ruptured and poked down into the sensitive inner layers and were far too merciless. Open your eyes and eyes instructed her usually slitted eyes opened wide as she stared down at Eugene, seeing Eugene like this, with his forehead furrowed to its limits, as he let out a groan from between tightly clenched teeth, and eyes felt a kind of exhilarating ecstasy, Eugene eked out a growl, you, no way, Hamel, did you really expect me to have completely treated your body while you were comfortably passed out, and eyes sarcastically scoffed, that was what Eugene had been hoping for, however, currently, if he answered in the affirmative, Anais would surely have scolded him, as such Eugene could only spit out the right thing to say in this sort of situation. I'm sorry, usually, Anais's anger couldn't be resolved with just a single apology, however, the current Anais wasn't really all that angry. Hamel's body had already paid the full price for going on a rampage on his own, also, Hamel's action had been for Mullen's sake, Anais caved in, where would you like me to treat you first, Anais had fallen in love with Hamel's kindness, she might have felt a thrill of excitement at seeing him in pain, but in addition to that, she had also felt some heart etch, with a bright grin, Anais tilted her head closer to Eugene, tell me directly with your own lips Hamel, where is the most painful area on your body, what type of pain do you want me to help you with first, Anais asked excitedly, could you start by putting away the finger poking my chest? Eugene ground out. Ah, oh, she had completely forgotten. Anais quickly removed her finger and wiped away her embarrassed expression. She had asked him where it hurt the most, but that was a tricky question to answer for the current Eugene. It felt like he had more broken bones than unbroken bones. All his muscles were torn, and even his internal organs had been damaged. It wouldn't be strange if he had died from this. But the fact that he hadn't died was all because Anais wouldn't allow Eugene to die. If she was going to prolong my suffering she should have at least treated me. Like I've always thought she has a terrible personality. Eugene silently complained before requesting. Do something about my insides first. Your insides? Anais questioned. In talking about my internal organs Eugene clarified. Whether they're in the chest or the stomach. And I seemed embarrassed by those words, Hamel. Are you asking me to take a good look deep within you? Eugene gaped in confusion. Oh, and I scolded him. What a shameless and vulgar person. What in the world was Anais even talking about? Eugene absolutely couldn't understand what was going on inside Anais's his head. As Anais's cheeks flushed red, she carefully caressed Eugene's body. The one currently taking the lead to examine Eugene's body wasn't Anais but Christina. Anais hadn't forgotten the promise that she had made to Christina earlier, with the light infused into her fingertips. Christina carefully ran her fingers over Eugene's pectoral muscles. The shredded and torn muscle fibers began to heal. Christina coughed. And where would you like to be treated next? Why did Anais change places with you? Eugene inquired. How? Christina gasped in surprise, was there really that much of a difference in the way that they spoke? Christina turned to look at Eugene with a startled expression, Eugene answered her unspoken question, there's a difference in your touch, really? Christina asked doubtfully, it's hard to explain exactly but it's similar to someone's array, Eugene attempted to explain, your touch and analysis are different, your body may be the same but there's something about the way you move your fingers. The truth was, Eugene hadn't received much treatment from Christina, not enough to remember each and every detail of her touch, however, he definitely remembered what Anais's touch felt like. Even though they shared the same body while only their consciousness swapped, Eugene could immediately tell the difference between Christina and Anais whenever they did so. Eugene said all this with a casual expression as if it wasn't anything much, but these nonchalant words of his caused the innocent Christina's heart to pound, this was because it felt like Eugene was validating who she was as Christina Roger is, Eugene returned to the main topics so why have you two swapped places, 
wasn't a nice the one healing me, Christina faltered. Ahem that is, Eugene suddenly realized something, ah is this some kind of test of your divine magic, like I've always said. Anais also has quite a nasty personality, why does she have to treat me as a test subject at a time like this, ahem, we can't always leave your treatment up to Lady Anais, Sir Eugene, just like Lady Anais, I too am a saint, as such, I need to get familiar with taking care of your wounds, as she finished giving an explanation that she herself knew was complete nonsense, Christina began treating Eugene's wounds. His cloak, which had been lying on the floor, began to crawl over to Eugene. Once the cloak was stuck to his side, Mer poked her head out of it. Eugene wasn't able to understand why the glare that Mer had in her eyes as she looked at him felt so cold. Even so, as if it was only natural, Mer rested her chin on Eugene's stomach so that he could stroke Mer's hair with his trembling fingers. Please stay still, the treatment for your hands isn't finished yet, Anais, who had swapped with Christina, instructed, as Anais's hand was enveloped in light. Eugene's broken buns glued themselves together and his torn muscles and nerves were reconnected. Eugene twisted Mer's hair into coils with his now much more comfortable hand. Where has Mullen gone off to? Eugene belatedly asked. Although he didn't know how long he had been unconscious, Eugene felt like not too long had passed. They hadn't even left this space yet. They were still on the other side of Lehanger. His left to catch the Nur, Anais replied. Eugene gave a surprised. What Anais explained before you woke up and her seemingly reappeared on the outside, is that so? Eugene replied in a low voice, Anais blinked at this muted response. She then put on an ill-natured smile as she leaned her head over Eugene, aren't you worried about Mullen? That idiot might have lost his mind again after catching the nurse so he might be out there somewhere causing harm to himself, Eugene scoffed, if it was earlier, I would be worried. It have also said something to you as well, asking why you allowed Mullen to go on his own and why you didn't go with him, however, there's no longer any need for that now. Oh. There wasn't a single speck of doubt or worry in the words that Eugene had just uttered. He had said it all truly as if he was only stating the very obvious, though their brawl hadn't lasted very long, by crossing fists with Mullen's barbarically limitless strength. Eugene had gotten a feel of Mullen, boom, the ground started rocking up and down, Mullen had fallen from the sky, holding the carcass of a huge wild boar over his head, although the monster was already dead, Eugene could instinctively sense that that wasn't just some huge beast, monster, or demonic beast, Eekmer's shoulders trembled in fright and she fled back into the cloak. Eugene wrapped the cloak around his body, and while barely being able to raise his head off of the ground, he stared at Mullen. Mullen, who was holding another size of an entire house with just one hand, bared his row of shining teeth in a smile as he met Eugene's gaze. Hamel. Mullen greeted him. You've woken up. There was none of the madness that Mullen had shown when he had decapitated the Nur in the Great Hammer Canyon or when they had seen him smashing his head against the ground. Mullen continued speaking and I said that you would be okay but I was truly worried. After all, the wounds you had when you fainted were so terrible, those were all your fault, Eugene complained, my fault, you're wrong Hamel, you're the one who attacked me even though I didn't want to fight, Mullen corrected him, although this was the undeniable truth Eugene still wanted to refute him somehow, while chewing on his bottom lip, Eugene thought about what he could say in response however, no matter how much he thought about it, he couldn't think of anything other than resorting to personal attacks. Just as Eugene was about to seriously consider choosing his swear words, Mullen grinned and called out to him, Hamel, I'm going to get rid of this corpse up there, would you like to go with me, Eugene grunted, ha. Huh. He hadn't expected that Mullen would say such a thing first, as such. Eugene honestly let out a noise of surprise, after staring at Mullen for a few moments, Eugene smirked and nodded his head, of course, I want to go with you, but right now, my body isn't moving the way I want it to. Said Eugene, although she had already healed all of his injuries, even Anais's divine magic couldn't take care of Ignition's recoil as well, as such, Eugene currently wasn't able to move his body as he pleased. Naturally, Mullen was also aware of Ignition's recoil. In that case, I'll just have to give you a hand like I did in the past, Mullen proposed as he tossed the gigantic Nur all the way to the mountain's peak. 
watching as the nurse corpse flew into the distance, Eugene gaped for a few moments before finally asking, if you can just throw them like that, why do you insist on carrying the corpse all the way up to the peak? No real reason, usually am not in my right mind so I just throw them away wherever, whenever I start thinking there are too many of them, I just collapse the mountain on top of that. If I do that, then everything becomes neat and teddy in no time, Mullen explained with a chuckle as he gestured to their surroundings in explanation. Due to the fight between Eugene and Mullen, the whole mountain had seemingly collapsed, but now there weren't any traces of their battle left, there still wasn't any snow, but the bizarre scenery that had reminded them of their time in the Devoldum those. Hundreds of years ago had also changed to a rather ordinary looking scenery of a regular mountain, this was because the mountain that had previously been eroded by the miasma had collapsed and had been remade anew. Well then, let's go together, Merlin declared with a cheerful expression. It seemed like there weren't any traces of his previous insanity left in his heart, however. They didn't know if or when Merlin's heart might be corrupted with madness once more. Something that already collapsed once could one day collapse again. But for now, at least, it didn't seem like it would collapse. Mellon pulled Eugene up and supported him, then he also extended an arm to Anais. Anais grinned and clung on to Mellon's arm, Mellon's feet kicked off the ground, in a single leap, they flew up high into the sky, Eugene and Anais gazed down below as they clung to Mellon's arms, what they saw was the enclosed scenery of a mountain, this was the other side of the Lehanger, the mountain where Eugene had just been had collapsed and had been restored, so it looked like an ordinary mountain, but the rest of the scenery hadn't undergone the same process, their environments were still similar to the Devoldum, the corpses of the Nur could be seen here and there, traces of Mullen's cell phone could also be seen, there it is, Mullen whispered, Eugene and Anais raised their heads, they had already climbed higher than the peak of the mountain. In the north, they could see Regurin, the end of the world, the landscape they could see from here should be different from what they would see outside, however, Eugene could comprehend why the Ragurin he could see from here was called the land that should not be crossed and the end of the world, there really was nothing there, all there was, was grey land, grey skies, and grey air, everything was grey and empty, however, it wasn't actually empty here, at the base of the mountain, in the outskirts connected to the Ragurin. Countless corpses of Nur had been piled up there, in the past, I always threw the nurse corpse over there, Merlin explained. Boom, Merlin's feet landed on the ground, he put a nice and Eugene down for the moment, then picked up the boar type Nur that he had thrown here earlier, I don't know where the Nur come from, I don't even know what the Nur are, however Vermouth said that the Nur come from the end. Because of that, I thought the deceased Nur should also be thrown back to the end. Merlin further elaborated, the Nur's corpse flew into the sky. The huge corpse flew over several mountain peaks and fell into the Ragurin, Merlin said absent-mindedly. At some point, I just stopped doing this, and Ice was supporting Eugene, without looking back at them. Merlin just stared into the Ragurin, Hamel, and Ice. I hated coming to the peak for this moment, at some point, I became afraid of climbing up to this peak, I didn't want to see Ragurin, the Ragurin that can be seen from here is different from the Ragurin that can be seen outside, but in some places it's the same. I didn't want to see Ragurin, I didn't want to see the end, Mullen confessed, Mullen, Eugene called out, Mullen continued speaking, I might be strong but I was lonely. The years have weakened my warrior's spirit, however Hamel, it's fine now, you didn't tell me your reasons for it in detail but from your fist, I felt that it was for my sake that fight doesn't count. Eugene suddenly spat out cutting Mullen's words short, just think back to 300 years ago Mullen, you had an exceptional physique so you were also skilled in barehanded fighting but I honestly wasn't that skilled with my bare fists. So even when we were both in our primes, if we had only fought with our fists, I still wouldn't have been able to beat you. He needed to acknowledge what couldn't be denied, as such. Eugene continued speaking quickly. He had no intention of giving Mullen any room for rebuttal, however, what do you think would happen if I had a real weapon in my hands? Starting from my previous life, I've always been an expert in all kinds of weapons. There's no comparison between me fighting with a weapon and me fighting with my bare hands, so which do you think is the real me? 
it's only when in holding a weapon that I'm really fighting seriously, especially since I currently have the Holy Sword, the Moonlight Sword, the Demonic Spear, and the Annihilation Hammer. I also have Fomat Storm Sword, Devouring Sword, Thunderbolt Pono, and the Dragon Spear. It's only when I'm able to use all of them that you can see my real skills, although you might be able to show your skills off with just a single crude axe. I can't show my real skills without the right weapon. It wasn't a lie. If I had just a single crudely made knife in my hand, the outcome wouldn't have been so obvious. After all, facing your barbaric fists with just my bare body and parrying them with a sword would place completely different burdens on me. With my refined techniques, I would have been able to divert all of your attacks without even damaging the edge of my blade. And in the end, I would have been able to slice open your body. You understand what I'm trying to say, right? Our fight just now wasn't fair. I haven't really lost to you. So that fight doesn't count. That's not true, Hamel. Melon replied with a rarely seen serious expression.